here, we are back here at the MSI MOA 2014 editions. Right now, there's a Cinebench going. Yep. Uh, you went through the scores and, uh, and overall. So you have a ranking per benchmark. So that was Super Pi, one ranking, Cinebench, one ranking, and Pretty Monk Fire Strike, one ranking. All the uh, for all this ranking you get points, and about those points you get some more points. That's the final ranking going on on that. Yep. So so far, who is the leader uh, at uh, almost midday now? We're talking about the entire competition. Uh, the, the entire competition, yes. We have a very close first and second between OC Windforce and Moose eighty three. Third place would be BB with uh, 99.6 points and are almost tied closely in fourth place. Mike CDM, the one American that I've been rooting for, he's in fifth place with an even 99 points. And as I said before in the before the crash, uh, pretty much anybody in the top 10 is going to be in the running for prize money at the very end. Yeah. There's actually $16, $16 in cash. Not sixteen dollars. Sixteen. Sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, sixteen dollars. That we like. Uh, that's divided up uh, among the top three spots. So, Dennis, uh, what do you think so far about these events? Uh, we have been seeing like a super pie. We have been seeing, now seeing Cinebench. Well, the what are your expectations again for <laughs> who's gonna win that? <laughs> Well, I'm still looking for Mike CDM to, to pull something. Uh, we also have a couple other Americans in there. But in terms of the event itself, this is actually very exciting. There's a lot of energy in the room. There's a lot of noise in the room, obviously. We have some people just kind of standing around walking and, and whatnot. I see Mike CDM standing right by our broadcast station as well. But yeah, the overclocking itself, you know, if you just watch it over a, uh, a camera, a static camera, it's really kind of boring because you don't know exactly what's going on and, and if you don't know what a hair dryer is used for, it's really difficult to say, oh, what the heck Well, if you doing? have no commentary and you don't have, and you just have one static, yes, of course. Yeah. It's like watching a, like a F1 racing. Yeah. You just have one, one, one camera one on one side and you just see the guys passing like once every few times like, oh, well, and no. it passed by. Well, no, it's like sitting in the, in the stands watching F1 versus watching F1 in your living room. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's the actually difference. the best analogy so far. So of course, then you don't get, uh, you know, the, the beer at the track and the hot dogs and the, uh, whatever they have. So now, since we have several cameras spread around the room, we're able to peek in on a lot of people. Right now, we have two of our capture devices from your partner at Aver Media. Aver Media. We're able to watch the benchmarks in action. Also, going through the BIOS when they're making changes and uh, anything else that they're doing, like making screenshots of it. Yeah. So here on the screen, that's uh, actually something happening at the very end uh, of, the, uh, of the venue. They're trying to uh, change a few settings. But what you see is they are changing some of the settings from, the, um, from, the, from, the, from a software inside Windows. Mm -hmm. It's because they are starting the computer at a certain frequency, and then they are uh, changing that again to some yeah, other settings. There's a, a strategy for that. There's the a maximum boot settings, and these are actually kind of safe. So it's kind of like uh, taking the system out of the box and putting the CPU in. That should always boot. Well, when you're overclocking, you need to have a baseline that you can boot from. With the MSI Command Center, which is that little program that they're using, you can change those settings on the fly within Windows. So at that point, you can change voltages, frequencies, and what might be stable within Windows would not be stable for booting Windows. That's the important difference. So it's kind of like you have one settings to do something and then you change that to bench yes. and zoom in your score. Yep. Unfortunately, with uh, the command center, you can't save profiles per se. You can program some in there, but they're not always uh, stable. So you need to remember what you changed and be able to flip it back really quick. We have some new newcomers for this competition, people that we never saw before uh, in a live competition. All right. uh, we had Moose83 that we never saw in any live competition before. He's from Germany. He did, he did actually uh, a good score. And as Massman pointed out on the live chat of uh, our channel on Twitch, uh, he said that Moose, uh, Moose style is in, uh, doesn't really fit for time-limited competitions. Uh, because he's someone that is like, uh, oh, this is not working, so I'm just going to redo everything again. And yeah. here you have like just two hours. 
you just you you need to feed the two hours to feed that. So usually when he's benching at home, he's just doing his uh, his, his, his change and making sure that uh, everything is working fine and stuff like this. Uh, actually, well, Massman thought about that and says, "Yes, I thought that it would be like a limitation for him. And now they and now as he performs, he's actually like." quite organized like running trying to get the scores and then if he says oh I don't want this benchmark like he's doing for a city bench he just did something and just moved to the next one he's actually preparing for the Trail Strike yep well that's an important thing to bring up is that there's always a strategy in any sport like take for instance golf there's always a strategy where you want to put the ball where your next shot is going to be you always have to plan to the end in overclock you need to plan to get your score and the problems that you encounter are something that you have to overcome but if you can actually plan out how you're going to run it know where you need to go for problem areas like if you have water always getting into the PCI express sockets you can actually you know that okay I can make two runs I need to turn the system down clean up the water and then I can start again that's something that comes with experience of just doing it you can also make these uh, mock runs like for instance you could have the MSI MOA 2014 Grand Finals in your garage. You just basically time every benchmark. Yeah, you can do. You can do it as because you have LN2 and practice. you have the other one. Yeah, it's it's just a matter of practice. Yeah. It's the same as you play. I don't know if you're uh, playing a game over and over and over, like a race game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to practice for for yeah. that. And then it's like, oh, okay, you have two hours to perform the best as you can. So then you're talking about games. Uh, are you uh, are you a gamer or? I, I have been known to play a few games. Uh, let's see. As Darren and I talk about on the Hardware Asylum podcast, which is a, a bi-weekly podcast show on Hardware Asylum, we usually have a tech episode where we talk about overclocking some of the reviews that happen on the website. And then we also talk about some of the games we've been playing. And lately, it's been Borderlands 2 for me just because it has a lot of replay value. It's kind of a looter shooter, so you go around and... Um, Go after a vault, grab some new guns, go out and try it again. Go on a couple of different missions. There's, you know, it's it's a very large game for being two years old. But the next edition of that just came out. It's called the pre-sequel. We've been playing that. Um, not much of a console gamer, or I would probably be playing Destiny. So yeah, I mean, I play a lot of first-person shooters, which something that happens on Twitch all the time. You know, people go and broadcast those games, and where. If we take into account some of the MSI hardware, like the Z97 gaming motherboard that you're giving away, that actually has high-end audio on board. It has overclocking controls. It's tuned for out-of-box performance. So you can buy that motherboard, put the CPU on it, put a cooler on it, and basically get the best performance you can just out of the box. Whereas if you pick an OC edition board, it's designed for tweaking and tuning. It may not be best performance out of box, but you can get the best out of it because of voltage controls, base clock controls, and stuff like that. And then take it one step further for video cards. That's big for first-person shooters. We have the, uh, the gaming edition cards. The ones that they're using in competition here are 780 Ti Lightnings, which are factory overclocked. Fastest performance out of box. Same with the gaming cards. Yes, actually, it's interesting that they are like MSI is always pushing. They have like uh, the OC series, they have the gaming series. Uh, yet we had one of the board here that the, the guys are using, right? Yeah, we have the Z97 M Power right here. They gave this box to us. You know, we're just going to open it and take a look at it. Opening the box and oh. You're opening the box. He's opening the box. That's insane. How? Oh, what can you feel? What can you find in that box? He's a motherboard from MSI. The 97 M Power motherboard. All right. So this main board is a LGA 1150 socket. So that's the one you have for uh, like a 4770K. Hmm. Smells Fresh. Good. Brand new. Brand new. Brand new. Here's what it looks like out of the box. So what's the special features pretty much on it? So you had like a... Special features would be uh, the size of the VRM, which is around the CPU socket right here. Looks like we got 12 phases. Yep, 12 phases, power phases. That comes into play when you're running extreme frequencies because um, 
right now on your desktop when it's in idle mode, maybe only one of these VRM circuits is actually going to be active. When you start ramping up the frequencies to 6 gigahertz, it's going to be accessing every one of these to make sure that the power is stable and the CPU can get what it needs. Some other features. Along here, voltage test points. So when you're that the uh, reading, the reading point or the... Uh... Yeah. So when you're overclocking, you go into the BIOS, you can actually change the um, voltage for the CPU. And then there's six different ones for the CPU to make it run. Some are for the memory controller, some are for the cores, some are for the base clock, so on and so forth. From here, you're able to verify that those voltages are correct. When you set a voltage, say, 2.3 volts, like what we saw from VB on the CPU, when it's running under load, there's going to be a drop in voltage. And you want to know how much that drop is. Well, 2.3 volts might have actually translated into 2 volts, compensating the, the drop in the voltage. And when you start using all of these power phases up, you're going to get a higher drop. So he's kind of pushing it toward the, the upper limit. The audio boost, the audio, this is something that benefits everybody. It's basically a built-in audio amplifier for high-end headphones. Works well for gaming. Even though this board says OC on it, you can use it for a game board. Sure, it's just uh, there's some features that are actually focused and targeted at overclockers, but you yep. can always use that as a, again, it's like a motherboard you can plug in your in your in your, in your setup. Yeah. So the guys are using this one today. Um, it's not the highest one you can have in the series. They have the X Power, that is actually a, a bigger mainboard, even bigger. But yeah. Well, the difference there is basically the X Power is going to be just like the M Power. It's going to be a little bit longer to allow for four-way video card configurations. Yeah. This one is probably optimized just for two, which are these two guys right here. Um, so it's going to use PCI Express links from the CPU, two video cards, and then you can have a, a secondary one on the bottom, then you're basically out of links. So we were going to try to do an LN2 test because we had a couple questions in the chat about getting burned by LN2. I'm not going to drink LN2 because... I'm not going to drink it either because reasons. But okay, so you're gonna. Did you pick up some LN2 or? I'm going to go. Okay, while you go pick up some LN2, I'm gonna explain the, let's say, the security and the dangerousness that you have to take care of. That. All right, I'll so be right back. Dun, 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 dun. Be careful when using LN2. LN2 is very cold. It's almost minus 200 degrees Celsius. So if you touch it, you might burn yourself. Uh, overall, you should not, never, ever drink LN2. You should always, you should always use uh, cryogenic gloves. You should uh, wear glasses. And although you, you cannot really buy it uh, like this in in the shop. You cannot just go. You, you cannot go to a shop and say, "Oh, I want 20 liters of LN2." You need to be actually known by the company to be able to handle the LN2, uh, the LN2 things. Uh, there is a few record of people, overclockers, um, getting burned by LN2. It's so cold that it's, it's going to be uh, burning your hand if you put, the, uh, put that on top. Um, there's a few, I'm going to say that, there's a few uh, rules that you, you can use LN2 for overclocking. Uh, pretty much is be careful, don't use like a, a 20 liter uh, D-word to just refill directly your CPU pot. As you see the guys use just a thermos, it's like 1 to 2 liters maximum that they have. Um, and here comes Dennis. And there's one thing, if ever that come from uh, goes on you, you have to avoid, um, I'm going to say that, you have to avoid a long, an ex a long exposure. Uh, when I say long exposure for LN2, it's like over two seconds, that's going to burn you. And that's what they use to, well, in some medical seconds. purpose. So, all right, so here we go. This is our microphone. Yep. So we have the microphone and the, the CPU but right in front of it. So if I move down the camera a little bit, you can see. See it this way? Like, right. So you guys are going to be able to hear the sound of the LN2 expanding. This is actually the fun one. <laughs> so, as you can see, I didn't get burned on my hand, but it rolled down into his lap and got stuck on his pants. And we have... <laughs> Frozen eggs. Frozen eggs. Frozen eggs, yeah. So, as you can see, we are actually used to... Um, we are actually... The, we have a lot of... Uh, 
experience with using LN2, that doesn't mean you have to be less careful. You always have to make sure that uh, people don't play with it, people don't drink it, and uh, that's really cold. I mean, that's that's what is being used for medical purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for burning off works and stuff like that. So or you can do ice cream. You can do ice cream with LN2. But that's not a medical purpose. Yes. All right, so we have, basically, it's almost all gone in there. As you can see, a little bit of frost. This guy is definitely below zero. Yeah. And so, of course, if I kept pouring, it would keep dropping down until it reached the temperature of what I'm pouring in there. What happened if you... Oh, one thing I didn't tell. Uh, <laughs> never put LN2 into a closed environment. So there, there was a few questions as, oh, uh, what happened? What happened if you put LN2 uh, in the in the system in a closed loop? You cannot do it because LN2 is expanding. So, for example, the the, the space uh, used by one liter of LN2, like liquid uh, liquid nitrogen, is actually the same space used by two. 73 liters uh, of water when it's extended. So the ratio, the expanding ratio is pretty high. So that's uh, that's why you see like all the, the smoke going on. And that's why never ever put LN2 in a closed environment. That's not what we're gonna do. <laughs> so basically what we have is we have uh, water in the bottom and then we have LN2 in it. So what you see here is just like um, it's LN2 condensation. Yeah. It's just condensation. Uh, we got a hand in front of our camera now. See, the pressure is building. So that's why you never should put um, LN2 in a closed environment. So eyes. As I said uh, earlier, be careful guys, all the guys here are using LN2 for quite some time. They Thanks, all man. took some, okay, they, they, they took some uh, security classes to, uh, to be able to, uh, to handle this liquid nitrogen as well as us. So back to some of the safety things. As I said, never drink it, never play with it without uh, knowing what you're doing. And uh, you should actually avoid uh, doing stuff like this with LN2 as long as you um, you can do it as long as you know what you're doing. So there's still some in the very end, but that's it. Well, if you guys have any question regarding LN2, regarding overall blocking overall uh, and so far, you can always ask us on the live chat. We will switch back to... Oh, here you are, Dennis. You're back. I'm back. It's good to be back. I wasn't gone very long, though. <laughs> better put the motherboard back before I get in trouble. So, as we introduced earlier this morning, this is actually a uh, CPU pod. That's the, what they use for cooling down the, the, the CPU. <laughs> One of the judges actually uh, making this kind of uh, hardware uh, is sitting there. So I think we have 15 minutes left in the. Uh, yeah, I just say 15 minutes left for the Cinebench run. Uh, we hope that all the guys can uh, still run something. I see that uh, Wizardy is submitting uh, stuff. But we will actually change uh, to see his uh, scores. Yeah. Just coming back, I'm going to change the input. To see oh, okay. His we're going to watch his screen. Okay. So on screen right now we see Wizardly, I believe that's the camera is on. Basically just setting stuff up. CPU container is still very, very cold as you can tell by the frost. Looks like, oh yeah, he's setting up for uh, the Fire Strike Extreme run. Now. You can see the GPU container on the video card. Special 780s high lightning edition. Oh, it's OC Windforce. There? That was OC Windforce. No, B-Boy G's. Oh, okay. That's the, always the one we were... Uh, oh, okay, okay. Mistaken. 
Alright, so We're here going. is the screen of Wizerty, the, uh, the the French guy. He's, uh, he's running uh, sign event, so he's actually in the last 15 minutes to try to, to get the best score out of that. Alright, so let's watch that one for a while, see what's going on. I know a lot of guys are testing Fire Strike right now, so they're using their extra time to uh, get tuned up and ready to go, because that is one to be one of the most important benchmarks of the competition. We have three benchmarks, Super Bright 32M, Sunny Benchmark 15, and 3 Mark Fire Strike. Mm -hmm. uh, each benchmark, you have a weight in point. So that's why most of them are focusing now on the 3 Mark Fire Strike, because the, the points you can gain from 3D Mark are, very, are higher than... Uh, right. It's just five points, or five percentage points. So that can be a lot, or it can be very, very little. It all depends on your ranking. And as I mentioned before, anyone in the top 10 is probably in the running for a first, second, or third place spot. So as you can see, right now on the screen is Wizardy screen from uh, France. He's running side bench. Uh, it's actually a very efficient run right now. So I just have to submit the scores. We still have a few uh, minutes left in this competition. That looks like 13. They're asking for the judge to come yep. validate the screenshot. And yeah. the judge is totally not paying attention right now. <laughs> so every time someone finishes a benchmark, they have to prove that the benchmark is uh, is alright to um, to validate the score. Yes. So right now the score is twelve hundred or nine. Twelve or nine. Okay. That's going to put him in tie in a tied place for fourth place. Tied for fourth. So he's actually having the exact same score at B Boy G's. Yes. So but B Boy G's gonna still have uh, 43.1 points. Wizard T gonna gain 43.1 points as yep. well. And that so will, that's a good padding going into the final round. Yep. We can see only Moose 83 is far up the, uh, the, the, the points. Uh, Vivi is actually, he, he won't post any better score than that because he's actually benching with uh, 3 points already. So he, that's the best score Vivi gonna publish for today's competition on the side bench. Mm -hmm. So he made a screenshot, he's verifying everything. The judge is... No, that's great. We pull up MSI Command Center, make a quick tweak, run it again. And since Cinebench doesn't take very long to run, you can do this over and over and over again until you get the score you're after or you get a blue screen. There's almost 10 minutes left in this run for Cinebench. Uh, Cinebench R15. So he's running against Cinebench. As you can see, there's a few threads that are uh, late, uh, but he's still trying to finish the run completely. Oh, and it's a blue screen! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys seem happy to find the blue screen. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. we're... <laughs> so, an important thing here is the stop number, the blue screen number. And you see it is 000 124. What does that mean? That usually means you do not have enough CPU voltage or you don't have enough voltage going to the memory controller. And with Haswell, you also have a ring voltage, which is the input voltage for the entire CPU. It could be one of those three. Usually, it's memory. So there's 10 minutes left in this uh, Cinebench uh, run. Uh, we hope that Wizard T is going to improve his score because he's actually full in the full place, I guess. And he can actually take over maybe Vivo G by one point, and he can take over VV and Moose 83. So he's really pushing to until the last uh, last minute to make sure that he can get a better score than them. And then after that, he's gonna switch to three mark fire strike as the other uh, opponents. The fact that he hasn't rebooted the system kind of tells us that he might be done. He might have actually ex expired all of the uh, voltage and multiplier combinations. We can switch back to his camera to see how things are going on. So where is the... Yeah. 
And we can see Nacho Arroyo on the screen. What else can we say here that most of the attackers already already start to bench 3D Mark Fire Strike? Right. Because 3D Mark Fire Strike, you have to prepare the graphic cards. Mm -hmm. You have to prepare the graphic cards with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the coolers. I actually have a GPU pod here that we can show. Ooh, and this is a slim. So, we have a slim pod. And I say slim because... It's slim. It's very thin. This is designed for multi-card overclocking, where they're right next to each other. So you only have one PCI Express, you know, video card width there, one slot. And at the top, this is an aluminum piece that's been uh, pressed on. It's a bit wider, so that uh, when they're together, they're almost touching next to each other. So you can actually pour across all four of them. Uh, it also is a bit larger to make it easier to pour into. But downsides. This guy does not have a lot of mass. So what? How does that imp uh, impact on uh, the overclocking for you guys? That there's n less mass. Less mass means that it cannot hold as the same amount of cold, or it can't remove the same amount of heat, I should say. So, say for instance, you have, um, you know, a two-pound chunk of copper. Mm -hmm. It's at a certain temperature. It's going to take more heat to raise the temperature of that chunk of copper than it will be if it was like a half a pound. Same, okay, so, it, so it's just a matter of uh, how many uh, L2 you'll be using after that. Yeah, you'll be pouring a lot more into one of these to maintain temperature, but there's inside, which you can't see on the screen, there's a fair amount of um, texture inside. So you'll be able to pour down into that, it will dissipate faster, put more cold into this, so it should be... Um, Less mass, but it'll react very, very quickly. Okay. Uh, you have the slim one, you have the big ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes yeah. you cannot use them. Sometimes you have to use the slim one because you have multiple cards. Right. Yeah, like I said, this is designed for multi GPU uh, benchmarking, like four way. Uh, usually, if you're going just two way, you're going to use one of the fat pots, which is two and a half slots of uh, space, a lot more mass in there, a lot more distance. Um, they generally operate a lot slower. So once you get it down to temperature, you'll be able to maintain that temperature a lot faster with uh, mist pores and you don't have to tend the pot off. We have five minutes and 30 seconds left in this, uh, in this round of Cinebench. As you can see on the screen, Wizard T is uh, benching hard on uh, Super Cinebench R15. He's trying to get the best core he can before the end of the round. So we will watch what he's doing, and it's a blue screen of dust again! Uh, yeah. So is he having like a, either condensation issues, or he's trying to push very much to the limits well, of the, of the system? Well, based on what he's changing in MSI Command Center, it, he's really just trying to get that... He's min-maxing, so he's trying to figure out what the maximum frequency is that will allow him to complete the benchmark. Do you think, do you think he can do it in less than five minutes? And yeah. run the uh, run the benchmark and get yeah, a better score. He's been trying for the past half hour now, so chances are that he either he hasn't found the combination, or he's right on the on the edge where it's completely random and unstable. Yeah, that's actually crazy because he's booting the computer and at the same time he's insulating the the graphic card. So he's, that guy is insane. He's uh, trying to push for the last course and he's actually like insulating for the for the next things. That usually the guy is just. Shut down everything, insulate, and then come back to, uh, to, yeah. the, to the benchmark. Well, he still has time, so he's trying to maximize his time. If he can get a better score, great. If not, then he just moves on to the next benchmark. And on top of that, remember we were talking earlier in the previous thing, you have condensation problems, right? Yep. Well, the condensation only becomes a major factor when it's liquid. When it's frozen, like frost on the side of our container right here, which we don't have on the screen, which is fine. When it's frozen, it doesn't move. So you can actually have it on electronic components. Once it becomes liquid, that's when you can get arcs across things and cause issues. So what he's also doing is he's keeping the system cold. And by keeping it cold, he's not allowing the water to condensate. And there's a, uh, 
a rumor floating around. It's somewhat true, somewhat not, that the uh, CPUs, once you get them at temperature, you got to keep them at that temperature. You either you need to bring the temperature down, get them cold for a little bit, and then warm them back up, or you need to actually maintain temp to, actually, to get the best efficiency. With some of these Haswell CPUs, it's most efficient when it stays cold and stays at the same temperature for a long amount of time. If he turns off his system and allows the CPU to warm up, then he's going to lose that efficiency. Mm -hmm. Um, as we see right now on the screen on the left side, uh, he had some issues. He's trying to run Cinebench over and over again. There's only 2 minutes and 50 seconds left in this Cinebench run. round. Um, so far, Moose83 is in the top spot. Vivi is second. Nacho Arroyo is third. Uh, Boy is... Uh, uh, that's difficult to say. Is, yeah, well, uh, you, get, you can say it wrong very, very easily. Yeah. So actually, as we can see on the on the side, he's stuck. He's trying to eat up the CPU, the CPU board, and he's uh, watching at the scoreboard at the same time. He's like, yeah. "Nah, I don't think I can make it." So maybe that's uh, gonna be the end of this round for Wizardy, as he's, he is yeah. eating up his uh, setup. Yeah. So while we move into Firestrike Extreme. Let's go over our overall and make a speculation on who we want, who you think is going to actually win. Okay, let's go. So right now we have OC Windforce in first place. OC Windforce has like eight, the, the overall overall ranking, yeah. overall ranking. He took first in Super Pi 32M. He is also seventh in Cinebench. But as we know, that's rated at only 30% of the total score. Mm -hmm. We next person down is. Moose, 83, followed by Vivi. Those two names are very synonymous in the top scores in Super High and Cinebench. So, based off of that, I think those are the three people that we're going to see on the podium going forward. But we have a couple of people that can mess with third place easily, including Toastly and Mike CDM. So, Toastly is actually the, the winner from last year. Yes. So, maybe he can win something. So far, Michael would be like, OC Winforce in the top three, definitely, because yes. that guy won DMY two years ago already, and he's always at the live competition. So he's someone very focused. He's, a, he's from Korea. He's very focused, and he's uh, able to manage his uh, setting like this. Manage his time, and the setting is very efficient. Yeah. Second place might be, I would say Vivi. I would say Vivi, because I know that Vivi is very strong in 3D Mark. Right, right. So if he's already like in the top of the ranking, but he's very strong in 3D Mark, he can actually like smash some yeah. uh, like more uh, even more better scores uh, in that. And third race, I would say, hmm, I would say Stepanzi can try something on the. Uh, that's that's ex on, on exact, the exactly who I was looking at. Stepanzi is very very strong in 3D mark or 3D benchmarks in general. That's you know that was how he qualified by super modifying a 750 GTX 750 and actually taking the top spot. I think, you know, in 7th place right now, 7th place overall, if he gets 1st or 2nd in Firestrike Extreme, he's definitely going to be in the top 3. Okay, guys. You have to understand that uh, the, the... It's a perfect storm, too, because somebody else will have to get out of there. Yeah, that's actually interesting to, to see. All these, the top 10, uh, the top 10 of this convention is in less than 3.3 points. Yes. That's insanely tight. Like, the, every time we have a live convention like this, it's very, very tight. Um, there is an, an announcement by the judge that the right, side event... The bench, uh, we're going to fire strike now. So the Cinebench uh, run is now over. Most of the most of the overclockers already submit the scores and move on to Fire Strike. Right. Only just a few guys were actually still benching yeah. the, uh, the They get a little bit of time to test the card out because they've never seen the card before. Uh, they get to check their mounting, make sure that they're making good contact with the GPU. With the GTX 780 tie, temperature is everything. You have to make sure that you have a voltage and temperature set perfectly. So making sure the mount is good, make sure you don't break the core when you put it on there, make sure that the voltages change. They had to modify the cards when they got here to make sure that they could get the right voltages. Um, and then decide if they're going to use MSI Afterburner to control the frequency and voltages, or if they're going to use the little card that came with it. Okay. The, I'm going to go a little bit more in details of the, uh, of the VG8 stuff, the extra settings we have while uh, in the 3 mark. Uh, time of, uh, of the of the of the stream. So I think what we should do though is we need to cut and come back.
Sure, uh, let's finish because there's one score being updated right now. Uh, we can actually say that the final ranking is as for, for Cinepage. So if we go to the scoreboard on oc-esport.io, you can have the complete scoreboard for that. You can also go on hwbot.org and, uh, and have all the details about this competition. So Cinebench are 15. The winner of this round so far is uh, OC Winforce from, North Korea, from South Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, actually performing extremely well in 2D benchmark, as usual. Uh, actually, I know that he loves, uh, he loves the, uh, the Cinebench benchmark. And overall, we have a few others. Uh, second was uh, Moose83, right? uh, trying to get back the, the scoreboard so far. Uh, was Moose83, and then we had VV and then Nacho Arroyo and then Wizards of the So Roman, come come here, come to the other side and tell us what you think about the sign run. So Roman is the competition judge here, the master judge. So, uh, what is your... Ah, it's been a, long, it's been a while. So what do you think overall uh, about the, uh, like the sign event run? Uh, what was the strategy of the guys? <laughs> they just wanted to run it and just move to fire strike, right? Well, the smart strategy would be to finish this one in like 30 minutes and invest one and a half hours to do 3D testing already. But what of the guys? Only, only one guy did that. Only one guy. Who? So, because for like almost 45 minutes now, everyone is on Fire Strike except Wizard 2 that was actually. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, know that uh, Fire Strike takes ages. It does. And, uh, Very long. It's also complicated to bench. Memory. You have another, uh, another component you have to pull down, right? So you have the CPU, the memory, the mainboard in general, and you have the graphic cards on top of that. And, yes. and you have the different stages within Fire Strike that require a different tending of the pot because yes. of yes. the heat that it produces. Okay. Exactly. So we have uh, Tim over here trying to pull up scores. Trying to be helpful. <laughs> So the latest score that got submitted in this competition was from Nacho Arroyo in the Cinebench. Uh, he had a CPU at 5.8 gigahertz. He was using the uh, Core i7 4790K, of course. Yeah, but the and the was only total score was 1188. Which is, should, 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 isn't this like a little bit low? No, actually, it's uh, it's yeah, his best score. That's the last one he submitted. Yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, if you compare the clocks to the score, it's not very efficient. It's not really efficient. Which is yeah, true. Yeah, actually, actually, that's actually what I run into whenever I run this benchmark. I have like an amazing CPU speed. The score is not where. But the question is, at what clocks is he running his cache, like right. CPU cache? Because if he, if he's running only four gigahertz cache, yeah. obviously the score is shit. See, you cannot only judge by performance, uh, right? So, so far, the official ranking of, uh, of the Cinebench run is... No, that's to provide. Can you actually go to overall ranking? <laughs> overall. <laughs> I find this one to be a lot faster. Let's see, Windforce followed by Moose32 and BB. Moose? This yeah, I'm quite sure impressed yeah. to see. That's the it, first it, time he's in this competition. In the live competition, though. So we're gonna um, go over the final ranking of the Sunny Bench R15. And, and then we're gonna take a small break and then come back after. So, Sunny Bench R15 after two hours of benching. Moose 83 is in the first uh, place with 1233 uh, CB points. Uh, then we have Dr. Wiss from South Africa, then Vivi from South Africa, then Nacho Arroyo from Argentina. These are separated by one point. And then, yes, the two South Africans have actually, Dr. Wiss, Vivi, and Nacho Arroyo have only one point uh, away from each other. So that's extremely tight. Now that's a surprise. Ponzi. And Stepan did jump to for uh, fifth place. Fifth place, uh, yeah. Good job. USA! Uh, Bebo Cheese is a 6, uh, Wizard T the French guy is 7, even if he tried for a long time to manage to get a better score than, uh, than the one he had. Uh, OC Winforce is 8, but he's still in the leader of the overall competitions. He's good. So even by being ace here, uh, he's still in the lead. Uh, ninth is Sniper Oz from Australia, then Tolsti from Ukraine on the 10th place. 
uh, Defer Dog from uh, China in 11th, Mike CDM, another US guy, 12th, uh, Perry Cabari from uh, Montenegro is 13th. Then we have Gunslinger, Roddy, Zizolio, and Bob MZ. Stream Addict was actually uh, saying, like, oh, who cares about our book looking? We just want to have fun. And he's actually saying that because he's losing right now. He's, yeah. he's not making good scores. He was expecting to make good scores. He was saying, oh, I came here unprepared. That's my trick to win. And that is not working well, at that time. Uh, that's actually something common that comes with Extreme Attic when he goes to a competition. He claims that I didn't have time to practice for this one because I was doing another competition. And, you know, maybe he was just busy doing something else. Sure. Uh, this ends the run for Cinebench R15 here at the MSI Master of Overclocking Arena 2014 editions. Yep. We will take a break. We'll come back live in a few minutes. Uh, we'll be showing a lot more of the fire strike. Yeah, we're going to talk about 3D Watch Fire Strike. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get the notification every time we go live. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we will come back here with Denis Garcia from uh, Adverse Asylum, as well as myself, uh, Truffman from uh, Overclocking TV. Yep. So, catch you guys back in a second.